Hi, I'm the Artie Dance, and welcome to this review of the English-speaking Korean action thriller, Take Point. This is a movie you want to love, but is it a movie you'll fall in love with? It's got all the right elements. It's an action-packed thriller with lots of fantastic special effects showcasing a plethora of conceptual military equipment. It stars the son of a well-known Korean actor and has a varied international cast, which in theory should appeal to most audiences. So what is it about this film that doesn't feel quite right? Watch on to find out more. At precisely 1800 hours, Young Tech Ri, Minister of the People's Armed Forces of North Korea, will attend a secret talk with the ROK CFC commander. Our team, Raptor 16, will abduct and transport him. Safety of the target is first objective. Uh, and the mission must be completed Let's within 10 minutes. Let's say a team member and the target are wounded during the mission. Who do you secure first? Ahab, played by Jong Woo Ha, is the leader of a troop of elite special private military mercenaries employed by the US government to abduct a North Korean minister planning to defect to the south. While gathering intel in their underground bunker, Ahab and his team discover that the minister is actually the North Korean supreme leader King, and the objective instantly changes to a kidnap and capture mission. As you'd expect, not everything goes as smoothly as they planned, as a series of double crosses and secret deals made behind Ahab's back force him to think on his feet as the mission takes a dangerous turn, and armies from North Korea, China and the US get involved in the extradition and suppression of the North Korean leader. Raptor 16, visual confirmed. A North Korean scud. It was intercepted by a Pac 3. Oh, fuck. Run your zero two. Okay, starting evac. Negative. Proceed as planned. This movie really does have everything going for it. In this modern market of video game military shooters, this should have been a no-brainer to recommend, and in some sense, it still is, for those wanting something shallow. But for those wanting more, this film leaves a bad taste in your mouth when it's over, and even though the ending attempts to impress you with an exciting, lasting memory of the film, the 110 minutes that come before it leave far more questions unanswered. I had a quick look at the director biography after I watched this film, and he seems to only make a movie every five years. And you'd have to ask yourself why. He has adapted the story used in this movie from a novel called DMZ, and I'd like to read the novel to see how far it strays. If you've read it, leave a comment below to let me know what you thought of it. This movie is not short of action set pieces that are admittedly well crafted. The capture scene at the beginning highlights Ahab's team's military training and precision. Their ability to get the job done quickly and efficiently is let down by a simple error, not checking that all the enemy's bodies are indeed dead. This one error starts a chain reaction of bad decisions by Ahab as the movie forces us to constantly remember that he is the type of leader who never leaves someone behind. The irony being in this scene, when he chooses to leave behind a fallen comrade, it's the wrath of the enemy he feels to remind him of his incorrect decision. Other action set pieces are equally as well crafted, considering the entire movie is set in an underground bunker. This has allowed the crew to explore tighter, enclosed action sequences that feature cramped gunfire while cleverly using the limited vertical and horizontal space. These sequences open up a little bit more towards the end of the film where a tank is introduced to cause some carnage and also to remove the ceilings between floors. Other highlights include the impressive cachet of the conceptual military equipment at the disposal of Ahab and his team. I especially like the spherical camera gadget that was used by Ahab to follow the action and guide his team. Although this did lead to a rather large plot hole, that is the control of the spheres. In some sequences, we can see Ahab clearly controlling one of the spheres at a time with the use of a joystick. Its obvious built-in gyroscope manages to keep the sphere facing the right way up. But then there are scenes where Ahab is attending to the injured North Korean leader 
and the sphere is still following his team without him being in control. Another scene that had me scratching my head with confusion was when the sphere managed to move from one side of the room to the other, but with nothing underneath it to allow its transition. It's almost like it floated across the room. While not a deal breaker, it's small details like this that usually get amplified by those looking for criticisms. The spheres also allow some great in-your-face camera work and the exploration of a few different camera angles not usually seen in cinema. With the enclosed space of the setting, it's a clever way to get around the restrictions of having to set up a large and bulky camera with a wide-angled lens to shoot the scenes. This also adds to the whole video game vibe of the movie. Raptor War 6, we clean up here, we join you. Wait, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot. But these cool things aren't enough to save this film from mediocrity. The first thing that will annoy most audiences watching this film looking for a Korean movie is that a large bulk of the first half is in English, and at times very hard to understand English. Thankfully, the latter half of the movie features more spoken Korean dialogue, as Ahab and the North Korean doctor are in constant communication, but there's still far too much English in this film to really qualify it as a Korean movie. And I wonder, how did the Korean audiences react to this? The next thing that will most likely turn you off the film is the rather long running time. While two hours is usually a great length for an action movie, this movie has a habit of making that time stretch out longer than it feels. Whether that's due to the repeated dialogue elements, the excessive use of the constant disaster trope of things constantly going wrong, the cringy English dialogue, or the action scenes that are just one bullet shot too many. There's just something about the length of this film that's a bit of a turn off. And while the final 10 minutes are great in their own right, they can't make up for the preceding time. In the end, we're left with a kind of Korean action movie with great set pieces and technology, but with a pacing issue and some nauseating handheld camera work. Watch it for fun, but don't expect it to be a masterpiece you'll be raving about for months to come. Have you seen or are interested in watching Take Point? Let me know what you thought of it in the comments and if you agree or disagree with my review. Thank you for watching this review. Your support is helping channels like mine grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos. You can also follow my films on Reddit at the sub Asian film fans and at the artydance.com.